In this video, we're going to be learning about numerical derivatives, or derivatives using data, rather than using functions. We're going to be assisted by Honey Badger. For our example, let's suppose that Honey Badger begins on the Serengeti. He travels towards a cobra, but passes by. He stops at a house of bees to have some honey. He returns to the cobra. He's bitten and pauses for a moment, but he don't care. He returns to the house of bees. What does this data look like if we plot it? On this graph, honey badger is moving in a straight line, but on this horizontal axis we're plotting time. On the vertical axis we're plotting distance. So honey badger moves up and down only along this axis, but he's moving forward in time, so if we make a copy of him we can see he's traveling through time as he travels through space. What this means is that on this graph, this slope right here, represented by this triangle, represents how far he traveled divided by how long it took at each time. We're recording his position at discrete times over his journey, and I don't know what happened in between these times. But I'm going to assume that the motion is reasonably smooth in between. So, I can store at these 10 positions, and 10 times, uh, the positions of Honey Badger. In my first array, which here I'm calling F, I'll represent the positions of Honey Badger, say, measured in meters. And in the second array, which I'll call X, it will be representing the times that Honey Badger arrives at those locations. If we plot these versus each other, we can look at F3 here, the fourth data point. Remember that in Python, we're going to count starting with 0, so we have 0, 1, 2, 3. x3 is the fourth point, and I want to know how fast Honey Badger is going at this instant in time here. So notice, I know how fast he was going before, I know how fast he was going after, it would be nice if I had more data points here, it would be really nice if I actually knew the function. But I don't know what this function is, it's got an up and a down, so it looks like maybe it could be a cubic, but I'm really not sure, and I don't need to be, because I'm going to take a numerical derivative. So as a first approximation, we're going to look at this slope here. Often when we're exploring these things, we want to look at something that's simple. It doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be kind of a reasonable guess. So we're going to look at the slope to the right of the point we're interested in. For that reason, this is sometimes called a right derivative. So I'm going to approximate the derivative by saying that the derivative at point 3, this is evaluated at point 3, is going to be f of 4 minus f of 3 divided by x of 4 minus x of 3. So what does this look like? Well, one way we could do this numerically would be if we take a copy of f and shift it, and then we can do some subtraction on each element. We can do this with a for loop, but there are other ways to do this that we'll learn shortly. So I'm going to initialize an array whose size is also 10. It's convenient to have the same size of array for my derivative that I have for the function itself. And then in each compartment, which I initially fill with zeros, I'm going to place a difference. So this box here is going to hold f1 minus f0. The second box will hold f2 minus f1, etc. Notice that something happens at the end here, that there's no value we can put in here because there's nothing to subtract from. So this, uh, this is going to be a special case that we'll have to deal with later. But we can deal with special cases. So here's what the code looks like in Python to do what I just described. To define a function, I use def. And then here's the name of the function. I'm calling it dir right because it's a derivative on the right, as we said. It takes two inputs, the independent variable, sorry, the dependent variable and the independent variable. So in this case, this is Honey Badger's position and the times of his position, but they could just as easily be arrays representing any two other things, where we take the derivative of the first thing with respect to the second thing. So this will look like df dx. If these were y and x, it would be dy dx, uh, but the function works in any case. We're going to define an array full of zeros. Sorry, there's a cursor right here in my screenshot. Uh, we're defining an array of zeros, and its size is going to be the length of x. It could just as easily be the length of f, because they have the same length. So 
we, uh, we just pick one and we make a box full of zeros that's the right size to accept this data. Then we're writing a for loop using this dummy variable i. And we're looping over a list that goes from 0 to 1 less than the length of this array of the zeros, of the f, of the x. Why do we stop one short? Well, we already saw we have a problem here. If we ask for this value to subtract from, we're going to get an error because there's no f of i plus 1 when i is the last i, in this case 9. So in my for loop, I'll take d, and each i will be filled with the f sub i plus 1 minus f sub i over x sub i plus 1 minus x sub i. And this you can just see is the rise over the run. Be careful with these parentheses that we're going to divide the entire numerator by the entire denominator. And then after we've done that, we'll have an array. It'll be filled at each value with the slope. These are just differences in this example. But in this code here, you can see it's the ratio of differences. And uh, that'll give us the an approximation using the right-handed derivative at every point, except for the last point which we'll have to handle separately. So here we've sketched in all the triangles that represent the slopes at each of these discrete locations or intervals. We have 10 points, which means we have one less or nine intervals. Notice if I have three points, I end up with two intervals, four points, there are only three intervals because it's the, the distances in between. This is part of the nature of how derivatives relate to data is because derivatives are about intervals rather than points, numerically speaking, uh, we always have this one less kind of problem, which you saw on the right end here earlier. So to schematically represent what we're doing, to graphically show you what happens to the data, these triangles represent the slope. We're going to make our array full of zeros, and that's just to make sure we have an array that's the right size to hold this data. And then we're taking into the first pocket we're taking that slope. So we're going to take, to put into the location associated with x0, we're going to take this triangle and put it in here, just like that. And then we're repeating, so for the index 1 point, we're putting that slope in, and then we're storing each slope at each location in the graph, remembering that at each place it's the slope to the right that we store, and we have this guy just sad and alone on the end. So if we plot what this derivative looks like, let's, let's first think about what th will happen here. I have a positive slope that's bigger, and then that slope is staying positive but getting smaller, eventually reaching zero somewhere, somewhere around here, and then the slope is becoming very slightly negative. So I think my slope is going to start positive, come down, become negative by around here, and then I see my slope is becoming more negative until it reaches around zero again, somewhere in this region. So it's going to come down here being negative. Around here, it'll switch back to positive and come back up. So we're going to see something that looks kind of parabolic, which makes sense since this one looks roughly cubic. A friend of mine says that uh, if I call these things humps, Sally the camel has n minus one humps. And uh, what he's saying is if Sally the camel is a function uh, and it's an nth degree function, it'll have n minus one uh, of these humps with inflection points in between. So let's take a look at our right-handed derivative. Here it is. Just as expected, it's crossing 0 somewhere here between 4 and 5. And it continues back up, and it does indeed look parabolic. No point on the end. So this is our right derivative. You might be guessing. Whenever there's a right, you could also use a left. So this is what the left slope looks like. Uh, notice this function here in this region is concave down, meaning it's like a frown, not like a smile. And whenever we have a function that's concave down, what is the relationship between the left derivative and the right derivative? Well, here I see the actual slope, slope of an actual tangent line right here, is in between these two. The left derivative is too high, and the right derivative is too low. So if we have concave down, then the left is too high, and the right is too low. 
But exactly the opposite thing happens over here where we have a smile, the function's concave up. So if it's concave up, the left will be too low and the right will be too high. This is kind of nice though. Uh, if we have two estimates that are wrong, but we know which way they're wrong, uh, then we know the actual value must be in between the two, which suggests what we're gonna try shortly here. So let's see how this plays out if we use the left derivative. So instead of taking at 0.3, notice we're still focused on 0.3 here. We took four minus three, now we're going to take three minus two and store this slope in this location. So it's the slope to the left. So the formula there is going to be at location three, f3 minus f2 over x3 minus x2. We can do the same thing we did before. Here we're just comparing the code. Uh, what are the differences here? Well here, we used to have uh, the range from zero to length minus one. And now we're going from one, so skip over the left end of the interval rather than the right end, and go all the way up to length. So if we had entries in an array here, oh, we'll get to that. Uh, when we took the, the uh, right derivative, we were looking at all but the last endpoint. And when we take the left derivative, we're going to be looking at all but the first endpoint. So that's the reason for the difference in these bounds here. We go from one, uh, over to all the way up to the length. With a little bit nicer notation here I'm showing, df dx i on the right is taking the i plus first minus the i, th, and the left is the i th minus the i minus first. Plotting this left derivative in green, we can see indeed it is the opposite of the, uh, the blue in terms of which way it's off. The uh, left derivative here is too high in this region where we're concave down, and the right is too low. And on the other side, the uh, left derivative is too low where the right derivative is too high because this is concave up. You can take some time to think about that and look at a couple intervals and convince yourself that's the case. We can see the two are very close to each other here. In this region, they probably have the smallest error.